capitalism crashed in 2008. Predatory loans wiped out 50 years of wealth gains of the middle class. If not an outright conspiracy, they simply conspired to take advantage. Now Wall Street wants to be your landlord. The housing collapse presented a rare opportunity. Global private equity firms like the Blackstone Group are devising a new rentership society. High rents and weak millennial incomes make it all but impossible to raise a down payment. The convenient claim that millennials have evolved out of home ownership has taken hold. Welcome to the Airbnb future. Feeling left out? You wasted a good crisis. 2007-2008 came and went, and for what? You squandered the perfect opportunity. Small-time property ownership is dying. Widening inequality is defining our time. Forget the Gilded Age. This is medieval. But it wasn't always like this. U.S. tax law of the 1910s and 20s was progressive, resisting the patrimonial European model. The rich paid more. We had the Great War, then the Great Depression, saved by the New Deal, followed by the Second World War and a massive boom. Top earners paid more than 90% tax. It was the golden age of American capitalism and of American homeownership for the middle class. But don't forget, the U.S. was built on violent racial capitalism. From sharecropping to redlining to the present, homeownership has been systematically denied to black Americans. The market crash in 1973-74 brought post-war growth to a halt. The 70s, Reagan, deregulation, decline of unions, rise of globalization and new technologies. Income inequality blossomed. And maybe you assume income inequality drives wealth inequality? It doesn't. Wealth is about assets. Rich and poor households hold different assets. Poor households have little wealth, mostly in cash or bank accounts. Middle class households have almost all of their wealth in their houses. Rich households own stocks and business equity. For 40 years, the middle class enjoyed a favorable housing market. Their wages were stagnant, but their home values rose and so did their wealth. Enter 2007. The crash was a long time coming. The middle class wasn't meant to recover. Real estate companies did, though. Number one largest owner of real estate in the world, Blackstone, uncoincidentally grew fourfold since 2007. At the root of the crisis was subprime mortgages and predatory lending. Taxpayers bailed out the banks. The banks took the money, turned around, and bought the homes they foreclosed on right out from under the taxpayers. The new landlord, by divine right, the billionaire, will remain safe from insurrection in their luxury survivalist condo built in a former missile silo protected by armed guards. How futile. The CEO of Blackstone, the company that bought up all those foreclosed homes, Stephen A. Schwartzman, is the first executive to pull in a $1 billion annual salary. That's tax at rates barely more than the annual salary of the average millennial, who's making 20% less than a boomer at the same age in real dollars. We're beyond the age of debt and onto the age of full-on predation. Schwarzman wants Americans to live in serfdom. The new 2018 tax reform pushed through this year punishes people for owning homes, the one form of wealth middle-class people have. There has been a redistribution of wealth to the wealthy. Maybe you're thinking this is all just some baseless fear-mongering. This isn't a projection, prognostication, or model. This is just accounting. You wanted an economic revolution? We're in one.